for me, personal development is my number one focus. If I'm better, then everything else around me gets better. This is the Badass Women of Real Estate podcast, where we meet women in real estate who lead, inspire, and have massive positive impact on their communities. I'm Sarah Kalki, and I'm obsessed with real life stories of grit, courage, and action. Their example gives us all the hope and borrowed belief that if she can, we all can. Today, I'm speaking with Maria Quattrone, the one and only. She leads Remax at Home, where she's established herself as number 75 on the top 100 agents in the USA, according to the Wall Street Journal. She's also the number one Remax agent in Philadelphia and top 10 for Remax in the world. Hey, Maria. I am so happy to be with you here. First question, how do you explain what you do if you're telling someone who's not in the real estate industry? I would tell them that uh, I am in the real estate industry and I do what's called Resi Marshall. So we operate in between what commercial real estate agents do and what regular residential real estate agents do. We are the liaison basically for the investor and developer who is, that's how they make their money in real estate. So whether they're rehabbing homes or they're buying a warehouse to develop into new construction or to build multifamily apartment buildings, we will work with, with them on the acquisition of the property all the way out into reselling uh, the property to the consumer, the end user, who would be the retail buyer. Oh, fascinating. You know, I, I've known you for a little while now, and I didn't actually know that that was the angle of your business, that you did a lot of commercial as well as residential, or the, what, how did you call it again? Resi Marshall. Resi Marshall. I love this. This is, yes. this is great. Um, and it makes a lot of sense that you are number 11 globally amongst Remax agents, because you're probably doing a lot of bigger sales than chopped up teeny tiny ones. Actually, we do sales right now. We did a sale as low as $12,000 lot. <laughs> yeah. And then we have um, a couple commercial buildings, industrial buildings actually, that are under contract for just under $5 million. So our business really varies. We have six business lines. Uh, so when one is not doing as well as another, we always have you know, multiple spinning plates happening at the same time. Which is part of why you're so busy, but also why you're so successful. You have a badass strategy of how you're actually making sure that you stay successful no matter what the market is doing. That's really, really cool. I love it. Next question. This is where you get to brag. I really believe that women should brag a little now and then. Um, What are your recent successes? As you know, one of my personal recent successes is hiking in Zion. I don't know if you know, but I had hurt my, pulled like my sciatica. So the whole week leading up to it, I was like basically limping around and even limping around the mastermind that we were at, spending time, you know, putting the heating pad on and taking uh, some medication to kind of help ease the pain and this and that. I really struggled to do it um but i was determined that i was going to get up there and i did and then we my husband and i also hiked the narrows which was i thought more challenging um because what i recognized it was the focus that was required and you have to be very detailed about what you're doing, you should do it first thing. Because by the end of the hike, I was very tired and I started to lose my balance. And it got me thinking that focus mentally and physically in order to succeed at a high level that we need to do those things first thing in the morning. And then on a professional level, level, excuse me, Um, I was just in the Real Producers magazine on the cover page. Um, We also got one of the best local places to work in Philadelphia. So it's been a lot of cool things going on. One other thing is I just got endorsed by Barbara Corcoran. So we will be in TV commercials coming this fall. That's very cool. 
tell us your story and how did you get to become such a badass? Like, what was your journey from the very beginning of your real estate career to where you are now? So my first job out of college, my first career was selling radio airtime for a group of radio stations. I was in that business for 11 years. And so I had no clients. I had to cold call them. I had to door knock them. And I used to go to the office and I would sit in the bathroom and cry. And like, this is horrible. Calling people. And they would hang up on me. And I kept going back and I kept doing it. And I got stronger and I got better. So by the time I entered into the real estate business, I was pretty well versed in sales. Um, in the radio industry, we had to call about 100 contacts talking to 100 people to schedule 10 appointments to close two sales. Real estate numbers are nothing uh, like that. So uh, my background um, in sales prior to this and just life experience, I think, allowed me to hit the ground running when I walked into the real estate business 15 years ago. That is like absolute story of grit, like wanting to quit probably so many times, but you didn't. I believe in the value of the compound effect. Um, I experienced it in my own career, and I try to instill that in um, other women about, you know, really focusing on just today. What can we do only today? And what are our micro commitments for today? And if we focus on today, then everything else will come together. I've been doing that for the last, I don't know, 20 years. That is a common thread amongst all of the badasses that I've got to interview so far this belief in I'm never quite there you know I've never made it but in a very intentional sort of way like you know confident you're happy you're successful you know you're like pleased with how far you've come but knowing that the moment you stop striving is the most dangerous moment of all right Maria what is one space or area outside of real estate that you borrow inspiration and motivation from so it changes but right now I've been listening uh, for the last several months to Brene Brown I just love her Um, Mm -hmm. I love the fact she talks about shame and vulnerability and how through those things you can grow and how you can become um, creative and it just really, she just hits home. Um, also, I'm reading right now, I read um, Gary Zukov, Seed of the Soul. Um, right now, I'm reading Heart of the Soul. And I just love his books. Um, it's mind blowing um, what he's talking about. And I never really thought we were in earth school before how he talks about earth school is really neat that you know that's our our journey is you know the meaning of life is that we're in earth school to learn from experiences and it gives you such humility through what you're going through and instead of everything happening to you you're like well what's this here to teach me for me personal development is my number one focus if i'm better than everything else around me gets better If you had magic powers, what is one limiting belief you see out there, especially amongst women, that you get rid of with your magic wand? I think we compare each other to each other way, way too much. And my story and your story and everybody else's story, they're all different. And we can't have the same results based on where we came from or how we grew up or, you know, how can you compare, say, for example, a salesperson who's been in real estate for five years to myself who has had 26 years of sales experience, for example. Or maybe I'm comparing myself to somebody else who's doing all this other stuff in real estate that I want to be doing. It is really the, the comparison is the thief of joy. And if it's one thing I could erase, it would be that because we do it every day, even subconsciously. My hair, my nails, my body, the clothes, the car, the houses, the business, everything, every single thing. Oh, you can't eat that, I can't eat that, I'm gluten-free. I mean, we compare ourselves to even food. It's crazy. There are things that just get in the way from you doing what you know you're supposed to do, but think about video, you know, you turn that record button on and I know for myself you know you see like you know your hair or your wrinkles or your you know you see all of this stuff and like to me 
hearing Maria Quattrone talk about this stuff is kind of like mind boggling. So I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you know, if you're like the number one agent in Pennsylvania, like all of this, I'm like, huh? You know, but it kind of goes to show like all badasses, uh, no matter how badass you are, you're a human being first and you have the same struggles and, you know, little squirrel circuits going on in your head as anybody else. So thank you for being vulnerable and sharing that with us. To wrap up, we like to do 10 rapid fire questions. Just say the first thing that comes to your head. Number one, when you were little, what did you want to be when you grew up? An actress. I love it. Number two, what was the hardest part about being a girl? Dealing with boys. Boys were always better in the people's mindset, you know? And they were mean, especially if they liked you. And I think as a little girl, that was hard to deal with. I was the oldest, so I didn't have a, someone to protect me. <laughs> I hear that. Uh, number three, high school. Did you love or hate it? Hate it. Solidarity, me too. <laughs> Number four, what women did you look up to as a kid? I loved Oprah. Yeah. Yeah, I just always really loved her. Number five, who believed in you most growing up? My parents. Number six, what was your first job? I counted checks at a bank. I was 14. (laughs) That's awesome. Number seven, when did you get your first big break in your career? I think that was when I did my internship at uh, an NBC affiliate in Philadelphia. And I used that as a catalyst to land my first job on college. Because of that internship, I got the job. And that was the start of my sales career. Number eight, what is the best part of being a badass? Getting to talk to other badasses like you. (laughs) No. Um, I like having fun. I just have fun. I try to have fun at work and every day and I work hard and then I go play hard and I think that being able to put the hard work in and then when it's time to play, go play and go have fun with my husband, travel, um, even maybe not even travel, just hang out in Philly, go get a facial, you know, just chill, just taking the down. I think the magic happens in the downtime, so you got to have the downtime and uh, you got to put the hard work in as well. And if you do those things, recipe for happiness for me. Number nine, what do you get to do now that you never thought you would get to do when you were growing up? I think travel. I mean, I tr- we travel quite a bit. Um, we usually take at least one to two trips outside of the country every year. I didn't know that I would travel as much. I thought, oh, maybe I'll have, you know, take one or two weeks vacation, but I definitely get to see more of our world than that, and I'm very fortunate. And I learn a lot when I travel. People think it's glamorous. It's not always glamorous. It could be really unglamorous. But I get to meet a lot of new people and see how they live and take that experience and bring it back and think about, you know, what are, what's happening you know other places outside of where we are that makes a lot of sense we grow a lot like you said the magic's in the downtime uh and last but not least what are three pieces of advice that you have for everyone listening to the podcast so i would say number one is belief i know that when i want to do certain goals if i believe i can do them i will do them i mean i'll find a way um and if you don't have the belief You need to go find it and be around people who do believe in you. Um, I would say take action. Take action every single day. And number three, be uncomfortable. If you're not uncomfortable, then you're not growing. And right now, um, I had to step into some uncomfortable things in order for us as a company to get to the next level. And since I am the business development person for my company, I have a responsibility to grow this firm. And so for me, that means being uncomfortable to get to next level and doing the things that 
uh, are required to do that. So that's my three pieces of advice. That's Maria Quattrone, the founder and leader of Remax at Home based in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, USA. If you want to learn more about Maria and her innovative work on the East Coast, visit liveloveathome.com. For more information about this episode, head over to my website, sellmorelivemorecoaching.com. There you'll find a sign up for weekly wisdom. Each week, we send you advice from our guests featured on the podcast. Sign up today for the free inspiration from the best in the business. Find me on social. Just look for at Sarah Kelke. If you like what you hear, please consider giving us a rating on Apple Podcasts. You simply give a star rating or write a short review on what you enjoy most about the show. Just like in real estate, word of mouth and reviews help folks find us a lot. Thanks for listening to the Badass Women of Real Estate podcast. Recorded by Ferdinand Mangat and produced by Sarah Hoyle. Remember, if she can, we all can. Uh, no matter how badass you are, you're a human being first, and you have the same struggles and you know little squirrel circuits going on in your head as anybody else